Today in the studio, folks, as always, I got a real treat for you. Clark Bartram in the house. Yes, sir. Also What's known as on? Superman. Batman. Oh, it's Batman. Yeah, I'm Batman. Why Batman? You didn't know I played Batman, bro? No. You didn't do your homework then. I must not have. Come on, man. All you got to do is one Google search of, is Clark Bartram Batman? Where'd you play Batman? On a short film called Batman Dead End. Ah. Yeah, it was, it it really blew up in 2003 when YouTube started. You're an actor too? I'm I'm an actor. I'm I'm all of that, man. Dude, I better read your damn bio. Uh, I'm a little cooler than you think I am, the real Bradley. I'm the real Clark Bartram. I'll read the bio. Ready? Folks, a real treat here. As America's most trusted fitness professional, Clark Bartram is dedicated to helping men and women become their best selves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Yes, sir. Mm. Learning as a U.S. Marine to always be ready, Clark has appeared on the cover of more than 130 fitness publications over a career that spans more than three decades. As America's most trusted fitness professional... Clark Bartram is dedicated to helping men and women become their best. Oh, I already read that part. They say it again. It's my team putting down your damn bio. Anyway, they like well, well decorated. You were in the Marines, bro? Yes. For like a, a long time or just four no, years? No, just three years. Three? They didn't know a good Marine when they saw one, so I had to dip. I had to go. Yeah, so did I. Yeah? Indeed. You were a Marine? Yes, I will. No, technically I wasn't because I, di- I dipped before I became one. Oh, okay. You, you figured it out earlier than I did. Then. Well, dude, what happened is I was at boot camp getting ready to graduate. My dress blues. I was platoon guide. Told my grandpa when I left, I'm going to be back in my dress blues. Cut my leg in rifle field training. Drill instructor decided to like, you know, use that to break me, which he accomplished. And I said, dude, I realized that I'm a piece of property and I don't want to be a piece of property. So I went and thankfully there was a good commanding officer that told me how to get out without any issues, which was just, you woke up the next day and refused to train. So I just refused to train. They put me in the fring, gave me an R3 administration waiver, which is like, I wasn't even there. It's not honorable. It's not dishonorable. It's just like, wasn't even there. And I got out, uh, after going to 11 weeks of boot camp. Where were you at? Paris Island? No, San Diego. That's not boot camp. Was for me. <laughs> Especially when they shaved my head, bro. Bro, so I got Dude, a great I the, story. I was the ugliest recruit on the barracks with my head shaved. It looked like a teardrop. I couldn't believe how <laughs> ugly I am. <laughs> That's funny. I went in on the buddy system with my cousin. And he had an afro and I had the the shag, you know, the haircut, just long, flowy hair. I was 17. He was 23. We went Paris Island, South Carolina, standing on the footprints, go in to get the haircut, shaved our head. They made us put our head down on a pillow. At the same time, we decided to look up at each other. And from the pillow, we peeked up and looked and caught a view of each other bald for the first time, fell out laughing, got in so much trouble, man. But I'm like, what the hell did I just do? What are we doing? Dude, I'm telling you. Hey, that, they called that T minus three, didn't they? When you first got there, was it T? I remember we were in the negatives. And then you had to get up to the, to oh, the okay, zeros. Yeah. I don't remember. Got, it was so long. That was 1981, man. Dude, you're not much older than me, if any. How old are you? 59. 59. 59 years old, ex-Marine, been on a bunch of fitness. Mag- You've been in fitness your whole life, obviously. Yeah. What, what got you into that? The Marine Corps. You know, I grew up being a sports guy and, and I went into the Marine Corps because I wanted the toughest challenge that was out there. I liked the dress blue uniform. Did you graduate in it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was meritorious the whole bit. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, it was the way I wanted to go. And then I got in the Marine Corps and, and excelled in, in uh, basic training. And then from there, I started playing rugby in the Marine Corps. When I went to Okinawa, I saw a sign up on the wall, Marine Corps now looking for rugby players. I didn't know anything about rugby. I just knew there was a ball and you got to tackle people just like football. So Mm -hmm. I went out and played rugby, got to go all over the place. But then eventually that fizzled out or something. They didn't realize you were a good Marine somehow. Yeah. I wanted to go onto the drill field. I wanted to be a drill instructor and I didn't get promoted. So it came time for me to get out And if I would have been a corporal, I was only a Lance corporal, I would have got a $16,000 signing bonus compared to an $8,000 signing bonus 
as a lance corporal. I had the cutting score, I had the time and grade, I had the meritorious promotions and all of these different accolades that would have certainly warranted giving me the next rank. So I went to my career planner and he said, you got to re-enlist and we'll promote you. I said, no, promote me and I'll re-enlist because like $8,000 was a lot of money then. And we went back and forth. I said, okay, enough of this mess, man. I'm, I'm just going to get out. And, and I left and that was it. And I got into the gym business you regret after it? that. Not really, because here I am today. You know, had I stayed in, I, I could be dead. a fat slob somewhere, dead, or who knows? Or, you know, my life would be completely different. But I doubt you'd be dead, and I doubt you'd be a fat slob. So do I. I doubt it, too. You probably would have just taken a different path. Yeah. But you did get out, and you said, screw this. So then what'd you do? You're out. How old were you? 20? 23. 8 to 19, 20. Yeah, like... 20? No, shit, I was younger than that. I was 21 or 22. I needed Where a job. Where are you living? Southern California in Carlsbad. Were you surfing? Were you a surf bum? No surf. I went to the beach, you know, just to hang out, but I didn't surf. I surfed one summer, but I needed a job. So I saw that there was a gym. It was family fitness back then. Now it's 24 hour. Yeah. So I went in and applied for the job as a salesman. No, as a trainer at the time. Guy said, come back in two weeks. So I come back in two weeks. Come back in two weeks. He did that to me three times. So by now, I'm getting ready to get out. And I was filling out an application to rent some furniture. Remember Grand Tree Furniture Rental? Sure. <laughs> we were renting furniture, and it said, where do you work? I said, all right, dude. And I wrote this guy's name down as my manager, Danny De La Rosa. I'll never forget the phone number, 439-4404. And I walked in two days later, and he was sitting there just like you are right now. And he pointed at me. He's like, I like you, man. Come here. So he gave me the job just because I took the initiative. You know, I said, if this guy's going to keep telling me to come back and he's going to eventually give me a job, he's giving me that job now because I need it. So I went in, I was a trainer, then I got into sales, killed it in sales, got all the awards and went up into management and then, you know, worked my way through that industry. So you were in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. Still am. Well, I mean, still are how? I help men over 50 live in their healthiest body. Guys like you, I target online and I say, let's go. Let's get busy living. So, so, so that's why you say I'm in the fitness industry because yeah. you're helping people get fit. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, really in the personal I development think, business, you know? Yeah. I was going to say, because like to me, the fitness industry means like you got supplements and you own gyms or, or you got some, you know, orange theory franchises, you know, or something like fitness, but Technically, now that you say it, yeah, that would qualify as fitness, but I'd say it's more personal development. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's like saying I'm a fitness model, right? I'm more than a fitness model. I'm a fitness entrepreneur because I've taken all those covers that you get paid nothing for, by the way, right? Everyone thinks How do you get the job? Looking good. I know, but there's a bunch of people who look good. Well, you got to look good and let people know you're available. So early in my career, it's funny. I would always help out photographers because I just wanted to know both sides of the game. So I would carry lights and, and do whatever they needed to be done. And there was a bodybuilder there and I was cleaning up after the photo shoot. And I'll never forget this. And this is what really established me. He told the photographer, he said, Hey, I'll, I'll get a hold of you next time I'm in shape. I'm like, next time I'm in shape. What if I'm always in shape? What if I'm the guy that's always in shape and they can call me anytime? So I started reaching out to the magazine and said, hey, my name's Clark Bartram. I'm always in shape if you ever need me. So out of the 130 covers or so that I've had, honestly, I've been called probably five or six times specifically to be on the cover. The other hundred and something times was because the real Bradley wasn't ready or Michael Hearn wasn't ready. Somebody was out of the country. And, and they're they, like, where's they this Clark Bartram somebody guy? with six pack. That's it. That looked good. That could sell their brand. They could get that thing off the magazine stand. But uh, but it had to do with six pack. One hundred percent. I wrote in a book that I did years ago called "You Too Can Be a Fitness Model." Consider your abs the invitation to the party. Mm. If you don't have abs, you ain't getting in the door. You can be as pretty as you want. You can talk as much as you want. That was a bomb. I got a bomb drop. Let's go. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you got to have abs. You know, because that's what people want. You're walking through a magazine. You're a, bookstore or whatever and then out of the corner of your eye you see this physique that you want so so you mastered obviously i mean getting it is one thing keeping it is another don't you think yeah i'm 59 and i could still right now today if a photographer walked in this room right now 
with a beautiful female model, I could stand in front of that black curtain and shoot a cover right now. You, you, and you pride yourself on that, by the oh, way. Yeah. Because, I, because I mean, that that's a feat, staying in that kind of shape. Like, what's your what's the secret? Just straight discipline? Do you ever get to eat donuts? I, I don't really like donuts. I couldn't tell you the last ah, time I had donuts. Hogwash, Clark. <laughs> don't bullshit me. I've never had a How Krispy Kreme donut in my entire life. About, carrot cake, now I'll okay, eat because okay. I like the, the so cream you, cheese so, topping. So do you ever get carrot cake? I get cheesecake, bro. But you never get carrot cake. Yeah, I will. You got what happens if you die, bro, and you didn't get fucking carrot cake? Can't you? Can't you look like this and eat carrot cake? Yes. Hence, have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Drop a bomb for yourself. Yes, you you can because that was a good. Yeah, I can have my cake and eat it too, for sure. Because it's about balance. I don't want to be some extremist. I don't want to be something that is not duplicatable. Because in business, as you know, if what your system is, is not duplicatable for somebody, it'll never work. Yeah. That's why I was telling you in the green room, like I'm not in a rush. The reason why is because I'm changing a lifestyle, meaning Mm -hmm. I could get shredded much faster, but I don't think that will sustain itself. Why? Well, because I'm not going to live that way. I'm not going, I've made the decision. I'm not going to live that way. Number one, I used to get, you know, well, I still do beautiful uh my wife is beautiful so i do still have a beautiful wife but my point was i would get girls fat like you know without being in shape without a six-pack so i always associated a six-pack with getting girls and i'm like well i I can already get girls so it never really bothered me but then one day i was sitting there and i was talking about i'm gonna be a billionaire and this and that and this and that and I thought to myself, dude, how am I going to be a billionaire if I can't even control what goes in my mouth? I can't even control whether or not I set on a, I step on a piece of cardio equipment for a, for a specified amount of time. Yeah. And then I thought, well, of course I can. Well, then why don't you? I just had this conversation with myself and it's like, oh shit, that's true. So I don't want to go get shredded fast so it goes away. What I want to do is change my lifestyle. Let me start working out five days a week. Let me start eating right five days a week. And then I can pig out Saturday and Sunday, which is why I'm not already in the six pack shape or I could have been, but I would have had to eliminate my carrot cake. If you know what I mean? Do you have carrot cake today? No, I don't have carrot cake during the week. I have carrot cake on Saturday and Sunday. Carrot cake sounds like a, you know, code word for something. It's whatever. It's whatever. Right. Like dude, five guys, burgers and fries. You ever have those? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of fries. Ah, dude, they're the best, dude. They're the best. The I fries I don't like. The burgers oh, are my God, dude. Blasphemous. <laughs> the fries are the Maybe best. Maybe I haven't had them enough. Oh, dude. Well, again, that's probably it. And not only that, you've probably trained your brain to not like delicious things so you can so so the discipline's easier to achieve. Because like, if you know something's good, because, uh, by the way, so f- for like three-month period of time, I could eat nothing but you know, chicken and rice type thing. And I've done it. I've even went on a 27 day uh, master cleanse. You ever heard of the master cleanse? Oh yeah. Cayenne pepper, lemon Mm -hmm. juice. So, I mean, I've got the discipline, but it's just never sustainable because eventually I'm going to. And now that I got a little older, I'm just thinking, dude, if, if what I'm doing over three year period will make me end up where I want to be, which is buff with abs, (laughs) you know, then, then that's much better than getting them in four months and then yo-yoing for the next three years. Don't you agree? Yeah. I mean, you have to create a sustainable lifestyle. Otherwise it's a waste of time. That's why I get frustrated with all of these keto intermittent fasting. What do you think of keto real quick? Cause I like keto dude. You know how when people say, well, listen to your body, I've always listened to my body, which is why I have no injuries. You know, I'm at the gym lifting and, you know, someone's like, put a little weight on that thing, buddy. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's got a freaking, you know, wrap on this elbow and a freaking, you know, ankle bracelet. Why? Because he's battered and injured and, and I listen to my body. You have to. And I don't lift heavy either. But regarding the keto question, if it works for you, then do it. If the Pringle diet works for you, then do it. Whatever well, what, is sustainable. What, yeah, but works. inside, how do you know it's working? Just because physically you lost some weight. You maybe physically you lost a bunch of muscle and the scales and the scales lie into you. Yeah. 
really ultimately for me and what I talk to all my guys about, and I was having this conversation with one of them on the way here this morning, how do you feel? How do you feel right now? I don't care what the scale says. I feel great, bro. Period. Done. End of story. So if you feel great and your blood checks uh, only, out like you I, said it did, oh, then, then... My, my blood's flawless. Yeah. So the only thing I don't feel great about is just this little pouch of fat right here. Yeah. Now, how do you get rid of that? Everybody wants to know. Consistency equals results. That's the bottom line. I can't tell everybody how to get rid of their particular fat because everybody is different. But what I will say is if you're doing the ketosis diet or if you're doing intermittent fasting and it's working for you, you need to be consistent with it long enough till you see the results that you want. Because we want results right away in business, in marriage, in every aspect of our life. Humans want it now. And that's the problem with our culture that we live in today. People are not willing to stick around long enough. I always say this corny ass thing, be like a postage stamp, stick with one thing till you get there. And then when you get there, it's easy to maintain. It's not that hard. All I've been in is maintenance mode for the past 30 years. Clark Bartram has been in maintenance mode, not building mode. I mean, trying to get jacked. I just want to take my shirt off and go, damn, bro, how old are you? You know, how much do you bench press? I did legs the other day, 25 sets of squats with 95 pounds. There are girls in the gym, not that girls are weak or anything like that, but there are girls in the gym that are lifting more than me on squats and leg press, but hey, do I don't we, need it. Do we want to, do we want to touch on the subject of whether women are, you know, comparatively weaker than men? Hey, I'll go wherever you want to go, man. Well, cause you said that and we know how politically correct these things are nowadays. And right. uh, Andrew Tate, my boy, Andrew Tate, you know, was saying the other day, what I would consider a straight fact that generally, because obviously there's some, you know, unique individuals in this world. So there's probably some unique females that, that, that compared to certain males are stronger than legitimately, which means the statement by itself is weak, that women are weaker than men. You have to say, generally speaking, but generally speaking, they are, but, but, why is that a un, that's why is why is the truth sometimes now offensive to people? Like it, when I say fat, yeah, everyone's like, dude, you're fat shaming. I'm just saying you're fat. Like, dude, if I'm fat, I'm gonna say, look, I'm fat. Like, look, I got fat right here. I'm fat. Yeah. Why is that politically incorrect? If I can't use the word fat anymore because it's an actual physiological thing on our, like it's fat and this is muscle. It's, they're two distinctly different things. So if we need to change the name of fat to something else, I'm getting out of the business because we have to be able to be honest with people about where they're at because we'll lie to ourselves to the point where we kill ourselves because we're so politically correct. So I'm not going to do that. So with regards to the women thing, yes, generally speaking, men are stronger than women. You put a woman in the NFL Give her a football, send her in the, you know, she's toast. two gap. She's done. A, a linebacker comes across and blasts her. I would be done. Yeah. If so I tried to all, do that. We all be done. Right. But so, definitely a, a, a female. Yeah. So any woman out there right now that's objecting with that is simply lying to herself. Unless she is that one rare or that group of rare women out there. Now, women can play football, should play football. I actually practice with a woman's football team. And I was joking the other day and said, Hey, can I play on your team? I'm going to sue if you don't let me play on your team. Cause I have a handicap. I'm 60 years old. You guys are all young. Let me get out there and run and play. What's the difference? <laughs> and she just kind of looked at me like, are you serious? I said, I'm dead serious. I will go play with a bunch of women and either get my ass handed to me or hand, you know, go out there and, and just Handsome ass. Let's go. I, I'll stay away from that because then there could be problems. There. <laughs> Yee, that's funny. <laughs> hey, so so go back to the six pack because because mm -hmm. six pack ain't easy to get, but it's not it's not rocket science either. How yeah. come more people in the world aren't walking around with six pack in your mind? Lazy. They're lazy. They don't want it bad enough. Period. Period. That's what it boils down to, isn't it? It really is. See, because people, people listening, they don't want to hear that. You know what? That offends them. What are you talking about? Easy. Easy for you to say, Clark, you had a job. I got three kids to feed and I don't have time to go to the gym. Yeah. So here's where the spiritual part comes in for me when I'm counseling with people and talking to potential clients. 
you have one body. So I'll tell you a story about a lady named Sally that I met years ago. I had a TV show called American Health and Fitness. We were between episodes. I had six of the hottest models on planet Earth on my show. We walked into the wardrobe trailer. They were off to the right changing their clothes. So any red-blooded American male is going to want to go to the right and see the girls changing their clothes or be around that, right? <laughs> well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just keeping it real out here, you know? Down on the left was Sally, the wardrobe consultant, cooking her lunch. Sally was about 4 feet 11, probably 200 pounds. So I'm walking in and on the right where the hot models are. Sounds, sounds like the way you described her, she was stronger than a linebacker. Yeah, she maybe could have played in the NFL because she was, she was that solid. All right. But I come in and I hear these girls all doing what perfect girls do. Oh my God, this makes my ass look fat. This does this, this does that. And I don't want to be around that negative energy. I'm all about positivity and, and lifting it up. I said, forget that. I'm going to go down and chill with Sally. Plus I smelled some really good food. Walk down to there where Sally's at and she's got this silver skillet. It was bright like aluminum and there were red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers, and chicken in it. And now I'm not the tallest guy. Sally was short. So I'm standing over top of her and I said, Sally, this lunch smells really good. I said, what do you have? She goes, well, I have chicken and peppers. And I said, that's awesome. And she looked right at me. The Bible says the eyes are the window to the soul. She said, Clark, this is the body that God gave me and I'm going to live in it healthy. Talk about a bomb drop right there. That rocked my world. I'm still talking about Sally to this day. And this was in 1996. I quote her all the time because that's what we need to realize that we've been given stewardship of the most valuable, precious organism on planet Earth, and we treat it like crap. We drink it, we smoke, we... I, I used to work with Jack LaLanne. Jack would say, Clark, men will give a cigarette, or a, they'll smoke a cigarette and eat a donut in the morning, but they'll give their dog the best water and the best food. Why, would, why do we do that? You know, and it's, it's because we don't care enough, man. Because our body's so resilient, it comes back so easily from stuff. Anyway, you get me on a, a tangent here. I'm getting fired up, man. I need some people to train or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I'm trying to get the story. So you got out of the Marine Corps. Then you started working at the gym. You went through the gym, fitness, fitness. Then obviously you got buff. Then we went to abs. And I'm like, dude, how do we get those? Because I'm trying to make sure the bomb squad picks up valuable intel from yeah. Clark Bartram. One of which would be, how do you get the abs? But- as I ask the question, I'm already answering it, which is freaking discipline, bitch. Quit being a puss. D diet, eat right, and work out. That's it. So I, I, it's, it's an acronym, SET. Sleep, eat, and train. That's what you do. You get enough rest at night to recover. You eat the right food that's good for you, wh whatever diet you choose, and then you train appropriate to your current fitness level. That's it. And then you progress from there. The more disciplined you get with your food, the more tight it's going to get. The more consistent you get with your training, the more you can do. And then that eventually comes into you getting in shape. Your human body wants to change for the better. It's waiting for you to wake up and do something good. But it's only going to adapt to the demands that you place on it. So if you're constantly giving it cheesecake and, and pizza, then it's going to reward you by getting fatter and more out of shape and worse blood tests and, and worse health. But the minute you change, like we can change people's physiolog physiology right now in this moment, right this second. One deep breath. <sighs> Changed. Changes what? Your energy, the way you feel, the way you show up, you know? So when people go into a business meeting, should they take a deep breath? Deep breath. Did you take one before you walked in Man, here? I took, man, I was talking myself up. I'm like, I'm, I'm good looking, I'm strong, I'm smart. I'm the real Clark Bartram. I'm gonna meet the real Brad Lee. I'm on the parking lot doing this. You can, Shut if, up. swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's commitment right there. That's, but man, that's I had a four hour, talk about commitment, bro. I'm so excited to be here. I woke up at 4 a.m. I drove from San Diego to be here for an hour, whatever I'm going to be here for. You're going to go back to work. I'm going to turn around and drive home. You're you not know? going to hang for the weekend? No, nah, man. I got a wife to go back to. I got work Why to do tomorrow. Why didn't you bring her with? I tried to. She didn't want to come. When you say you got work tomorrow, do you work seven days a week? Yes. Nonstop? Well, I, you know, there's some stoppage in there, but it, 
I'm sure you can relate to this. It looks like I'm not working, but I'm always thinking of something and doing something that's going to be productive or beneficial to the men that are drawn to me and what I do. Yeah. Cause that's your main passion is helping men become better men. Absolutely. 100%. I was listening to Tony Robbins on the way up here and he was just talking about that, you know, your passion and how and actually it was less, less Brown. If you know, you shouldn't have to be paid for what you do. I just happen to get paid for what I love to do. Like God literally created me for this moment right now. Facts. There's no one that can conv- convince me of anything different. So that's why I love doing what I do. And that's why the men that coach with me, they love it. They stick around. They don't just sign up for 12 weeks and dip. By the way, maximized man elite.com. If you guys are out there a little bit chubby, got a little bitch titty trying to get in shape, want to get your spiritual side of things figured out. What was the third one? You coach them on fitness. So I, I have five principles that I teach. Yeah. And, and this is what every man learns is mindset is the single most important thing for sure. Because everyone says, Hey Clark, what's most important nutrition or training? Neither is the most important. So it's mindset, meals, movement, community is big. And then integrity. How much integrity do you have? Not just in your marriage or in life, but how much integrity do you have when you report to me in the morning, how you're doing on your program? When I call you and say, Brad, what's up? Did you eat any any carrot cake today and you're not supposed to and you're like eh, well you know and you're like yes or no come on man we're doing this or we're not well you can tell by the results can't you yeah but it it's it's such an interesting thing to watch men come to life even at a later age like us right after 50 it is possible to teach an old dog new tricks absolutely yeah, sure it is you know i see it every single day of my life man i feel so fortunate to do what i do it's unbelievable And you've been doing it for a while. Since I turned 50, I'm like, okay, now it's time, right? I've been coaching people forever, but when I turned 50, I said, now I can be that guy, the man that coaches men over 50, because I am the go-to guy on planet earth. There's no one better than me. Well, I'm over 50, so that means means you're my guy now. 100%. So how do I get rid of these love handles without freaking being a strict bastard is it just time or do i got to be a strict bastard you don't have to be strict you have you have to it's strict is relative to where you're at right now so what we do is we assess where you're at and then we take you to the next level that is sustainable for as long as we need to be at that level and then we graduate you from there no different than you bring a salesperson in here and teach them how to close and teach them how to do what you do you would say okay this is where we're going to start you know here's an objection i need you to learn how to overcome this You know, and that's what I learned early in the fitness game was, you know, these objections that people have, they're the same regardless of what industry we're in, right? It's all the same bullshit. Dude, it says here you got a bunch of books. You you too can be a fitness model, spiritually fit, a fitness program you can have faith in. That's funny. Who's making up these clever titles? Me, man. Where your mind goes, you go. Where your mind goes, you go. Volume two and magical mornings. And then my newest one is 10 steps to conquer fear and anxiety, go from fight or flight to listen and learn. Well, that's probably a popular one. It is. I wrote that during the pandemic and I wrote that when, so I make a living off of endorsement deals. My whole life I've made a living just off of being me. It's funny because we would walk down to the mailbox when my kids were little and I would pull out mail and I said, this is how your dad makes money. I get paid for being me, you know? And they never really knew what that was until recently. Now they see it and they appreciate it now. My daughter's 31, my son's 27, and they're both entrepreneurs themselves. And it's, it's just, where was I going with that? I forgot. Where were we headed? I totally lost my train of thought when I started thinking about my kids. I got all sidetracked, was ready well, to cry. You, I, I, said you have, I said you have a bunch <laughs> all of the books. Yeah. So during the pandemic, I lost four of my deals, which was the majority of my income. So I was sitting there one day going, oh my God, what do I do? I like, I got to restart again from scratch. I went from, you know, doing well to having zero income. So I started writing that book. I'm like, what do I do? And I just created that book and, you know, selling it. I'm like MC Hammer. I sell it out of the trunk. I don't put it on Amazon or any of that. Hey, by the way, folks, if you guys want to follow this dude at Clark Bartram, B-A-R-T-R-A-M, Maximized Man Elite. Dot com. You guys know how to spell it just like it sounds. 
just in case I don't mention it. So if someone's out there a little bit, you know, lost and they want to get in shape, they want a good coach, you're the dude, especially if they're over 50. For sure. And I have guys under 50 in my program too, but that's just my avatar, right? For business and marketing, you have to have that. Yeah. And you said, what was it? Mind? No. Oh yeah. Uh, those five things. But I'm talking about when I read, I read three things you, you, you coached in. Oh. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So physically, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Emotionally, how do you coach somebody on emotions? So for example, on the way up here, I have a guy that when he first came to me, he was obsessed with the scale. So that got him emotional. Like, Clark, I'm not losing weight. I'm not losing weight. So I have to coach him off of that concept of this inanimate object, a scale that's made in some factory in China where people don't care less about you as a person, letting that dictate your life. Because he would tell me five other things. Clark, I feel great. I'm losing weight. I have more energy than ever. You know, I'm having sex all the time. I got off testosterone, but I haven't lost any weight. I'm like, dude, did you see how your energy changed? Your emotions went down when you talked about the scale. So on the way up here, he was like, I don't even look at the scale anymore. And I felt this difference in his energy and his, his feeling and his emotion. So we just talk about the things that people focus on that are complete wastes of time. Do you think test is bad or good? Because there's a lot of people getting on test right now. It's good if you need it and you're instructed Everyone by a qualified. It, supposedly. No, they don't. And, and men get on it too quick. So here's the problem. When, when do you, what, what level test should you have? So, so let's, let's say at 40. Yeah. At 40, it, it depends on you because everyone's physiology is different. It's hard to say because someone with high testosterone could still suffer the effects of low testosterone. And someone with low testosterone might not have some of the negative effects of low testosterone. So low, like, like me. It's not always the problem, right? Yeah, when I, when I went in to get tested on, on testosterone, I wasn't low, but I was a 400. And they're like, that's actually pretty good for your age. And I'm like, what do you mean for my fucking age? Like, yeah. how, what would I be if I were 30? He said, when you were 30 years old, you were probably at about, I don't know, 900 to 1,000 yeah. normal level. Yeah. And I'm like, well, then let's get me to 900 to 1,000. And I've been there ever since. Problem is your poor wife has got to run from you every time you come around her. So no. she's hot, you know, and the whole bit, like you said, nah, just that, that, banging that, away that, all the time. That ain't a problem, bro. Okay. <laughs> so here, let me tell you my conspiracy theory. LabCorp has a range. So the range used to be from like 300 to 1200. I mean, so if you went to your general practitioner and you were at 301, he's like, well, you're within the range. You're like, but doc, I feel like crap. You're within the range. Well, I'm not having sex. You're within the range. I'm gaining weight. You're within the range. I can't sleep. You're within the range. Those are some of the symptoms that would be, you know, something that was pointing to low T, but you're within the range. So at the age of 18, like you said, maybe you were still within the range, but you were at the top. Would you hire a sales guy that at the bottom of the range of, you know, someone being a badass? No, you don't want someone down here. You want them up here. So what LabCorp has done is taken that whole graph and lowered it. So now the lower end of that is say 250 and the upper is 900 instead of 1100. To me, we're trying to rob men of being men. So how do they get their own test back? How do they get their own like individually? Yeah. Like you say, you teach guys how to raise their natural testosterone so yeah. they don't have to get it injected. Right. So the first thing you got to do is believe that it's possible because here's the truth. Every one of us has been told, well, when you're 50, your T is going to go down. In 1950s, all of our grandpas were way higher than we are. Whether that's true or not doesn't matter. I don't let those things indicate my life. Like they say, the economy's going bad. You're not going to let that affect your economics. You're still going to be the real Bradley making money, doing what you do, right? So we don't let people's idea of what should happen at a certain age affect us. We have to control our own ecosystem. So belief is the number one thing. I absolutely believe my testosterone is 875 naturally. No TRT, no PCP, no HRT, none of that you know, stuff. Maybe you're just lucky. No, I have genetics, which would be the luck, right? And then epigenetics. So genetics is only going to take you up until a certain age. 
But epigenetics or lifestyle is going to carry you through the rest of your life. So you mentioned it earlier. Yes, I do this consistently. But for a regular guy, you know, a, a guy who is not in the fitness industry, someone like me, to boost their testosterone, belief, right? And then you have to eat the right foods. Then you have to train the right way. Then you have to do some of these hacks that are possible. A hack that I do, a biohack as they call it now, contrast therapy. I have a dry sauna with infrared and red light in my backyard. I have a cold plunge in my backyard. Every day I get up and I get in that sauna for 20 minutes. I sit in front of the red light and then I get in the cold plunge. My testosterone went from 721 to 875 during the time I got my cold plunge. That's the only thing that I've changed in my life. I know for sure. I don't care who argues against me. They could be a Harvard PhD. I know for sure. Every man can move his testosterone forward in the right direction. Just Facts. jumping in a cold plunge? Jumping in a cold plunge. But it doesn't stay there long enough. Well, you got to be consistent with it. You can't like take one shot of testosterone and expect that to last the rest of your life either. There's consistency that needs to be there with everything. So you just stay in a cold plunge. Yeah, I just live in it, man. I can't, I just have balls, you know, ice on my balls everywhere I go. Dude, I, I you know, I got to quit being a puss in some things because like cold plunge, I always think to myself, Ugh, I don't know about that. Get one. Hey, at cold plunge, sponsor our man, the real Brad Lee. He'll put you out there. That, so I have the, the beautiful one. The one was on Shark Tank, the white, you know, real nice. It's filtered. It's got an ozonator in there. The water smells good. Doesn't smell like rotten bologna. Like these guys are getting ice chests. Man, you can get electrocuted in that thing. I don't want to sit in a barrel with ice cubes. That's no fun to me. I don't go to 39 degrees. I'm no Wim Hof. What do you do? I go 50. I, I stay at 50. I was in there this morning. I said, I'm going to see the real it's, Bradley. It's I'm getting good. cold. 50 is great. You don't need to go in there and, and torture yourself. So I get in a hot so tub. So why can't you just dive in the pool? You could right now. And actually, you could take a bath. It's because most groundwater is around 55 degrees, I think. Right now, the groundwater, if you ran a bath, would, would be cold enough. And even Wim Hof says taking a cold shower is good. But I like being submerged in the water because I like to meditate then. Yeah. I can do some pretty groovy stuff in the so cold plunge. So cold plunge. Where are you, cold plunge? I'm going to get you hooked up. So I'm going to bleep that out until they give me one. I'm going to get you hooked up. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. Dude, I got to start getting into what I would say better habits. What are your habits, like your daily habits? So I wake up and I probably wake up around four something and- Alarm clock or no? No. I don't even know what alarm clock is. Yeah, My wife's either. like, you want me to set an alarm clock? I'm like, did you really just ask me? I know. I just figured I'd ask. I don't want you to be late. So I woke up this morning at 430 and if you ever woke up at seven, what would you think in your mind? I've done that. I've, you know, I've had, what would you think though? I would think, man, I wasted three hours of like good times with myself. I love being by myself, man. I love me some me. But, that, but that's, but see, like most people will kind of be hard on themselves because you know, oh, dang it. You know, but you know what I think? I listen to my body. Yeah. I needed to sleep. That's it. That's, That's all it. I think. I, don't, I, don't I wake up. Myself. I'm like, damn, I must have needed some sleep. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm the most disciplined guy in the world. I heard Joe Rogan say, I'm the most disciplined, lazy person you'll ever meet. I really am. I don't enjoy lifting weights at all. I enjoy the results that I get. I don't always enjoy going in that cold plunge, but I enjoy the, I enjoy coming out on the how other you, end. How do you feel like what, what? Results would you feel like if you started cold plunging? Refreshed, crisp, like alive, man. Your skin gets better. Everything gets better. I swear, my coaching guys that have been with me for a while, they're like, Clark, you look younger than when I started with you a year ago. Your skin, your energy. Could be the red lights, though. If whatever it is. You know what I mean? I ain't trying right, to figure, figure it out. out. Let's, let's figure out which one it is. It's, it's all. If I think the cold really think plunge, the cold. I'd like to leave that one out. Okay. <laughs> no, you got to do it. We got to get you in a cold plunge. I, it, don't. Yeah. It, I, would, I, would, I would do it on a regular basis, just like I would a, a red light sauna. Do you have a red light sauna? I don't have any of it. Oh, man. Come on. You got to get that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm just now hearing about it. Yeah. No. Drop some bombs. That's some good stuff that everybody. So you ask what people can do today to change that. And people are like, well, I'm not rich. You know, people got on me on TikTok and the trolls tore me up because I got in a in a cold plunge in a in a steam room. And it wasn't even mine. It was my buddies, Mike Geary out in Utah, you know, full on 
this guy's has got so much money. And I didn't even tell anybody it wasn't mine until I got my own. I'm like, this is mine. But you don't have to have a cold. You don't have to have money to get in cold water. You have to have cold water. And that's available anywhere. You know? So. You just have to have like the, the, the will to be uncomfortable. And, and that's really what it is, right? When you hit the cold shower, like, <gasps> you know, you start, you know, my, it's like not enjoyable. And people want to be comfortable. And they don't want to be uncomfortable, which is why they end up soft and broken. Yeah. If That's you end up, if you, if you seek discomfort and you are doing the cold shit, you know, your body's more conditioned. Yeah. And then the more conditioned your body, the more conditioned your mind. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm weird in that way that I like being challenged like that. Like I love going to my counselor. I go to a counselor and I love for her to challenge me on stuff that I went in there with this expectation that I was going to get supported on. She's like, no, 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 no. That's not how you need to think. You need to think like this. So that's discomforting, you know, having somebody challenge you on your bullshit. It's like, no, but I've learned to love that. And I think that started in the Marine Corps with drill instructors screaming and yelling at you and you're doing your best. You thought you did great, but they're still pushing you to get more out of you because they know there's more available in you. So how important do you think the habits are? Extremely important because we develop habits either way, either good ones or bad ones. And the bad ones are done by osmosis. They just happen because we get up in the morning. You asked me about my daily habits. Oh yeah. What I don't they? turn on the news. I never watch the news. Okay, so you get up at four, th- four o'clock. I interrupted you. Go yeah. t- tell me your tell me your daily routines. I consume no media before I pour into my own brain. No TikTok, no YouTube, no none of social media. I don't check my emails. I don't do any of that until I get some quality time for myself. In my book, Magical Mornings, I quote a Persian poet by the name of Rumi. He said, the morning breeze has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. So I literally get up in the morning listening for these secrets. And the first thing I do is years ago, I had a marketing specialist help me come up with my personal vision and my personal mission statement. And it's to positively and powerfully affect everyone I come into contact with. I've been operating like that for 25 years. So when I put my feet on the ground, I literally look at my feet and I say, I'm going to positively and powerfully affect everyone I come into contact with today. Then from there, I go in and I'll have my water, I'll hydrate, wait for about 30 minutes, have a cup of coffee, and then I'll be listening to a YouTube thing. You know, I'll put on Joe Rogan, I'll listen to your stuff real live. I'm not just kissing your ass. I listen to your stuff. Thank but you. your stuff is great for real, man. And that's what I do. I feed my mind with other people's like pers- uh like perspective on life, man. And I'm like, okay, that's dope. I like the way he's doing this. I like what he's saying. So I feed, feed, feed. Then I get in a hot tub and I put on a meditation, like some affirmations, or maybe I'll do like an astral projection or something like that, depending on how much time. How, what, like, is this six o'clock, seven o'clock? Not still around four thirty. Five. Damn, you just done a lot of shit in two minutes. No, yeah, it, it, it doesn't take long to drink water and and say I'm going to positively and powerfully affect you. That takes seconds. Okay. So then I got the how bath much water, water. Do you drink? I bought that much. So a bottle of water. A bottle of water. Yeah, we have a little cooler. I just fill it up. Do you think? Do you think the gallon a day is important? No. Your body weight in ounces, or half your body weight in ounces, because we're all different size. What if you got a so little lady this big? So if I'm two twenty, it's one hundred and ten ounces. Yeah, that's damn near. How many gallons in an ounce? How many ounces in a gallon? One mm-hmm. twenty. Yes. Yeah. So and I need a little less than a gallon. A little less than yeah, because we're all different sizes, right? So that thing's been kind of off. But I can't stand seeing dudes in the gym with a gallon of water walking around. It's like you. But anyway, so I'll do that. I go in the bathtub, listen to the meditation, cold plunge. Or if I turn the sun on in the morning, it depends because sometimes if it's really cold, it takes forever to heat that thing up. So I always do hot tub and cold plunge. And then when I'm in the cold plunge, I can literally meditate like I go into some time warp, really weird thing. And it gets me in a place where I'm focused and I'll come out butt naked in the morning, raising my hands up, just thanking God for today and really trying to rev up my state as Tony Robbins refers to it, get my state right. And then I go in to do my stuff, but I'll have three or four clients. I have a gym at my house. I train a few people, selected people. And then when I'm done with them, I actually leave my house and go to the gym, train there. How come? To get out of the house. Cause you know, I work from home, so I got to get away. 
be around people and you know i, I like what, where where do you live san diego escondido yeah just you, north do you know wes watson wes why do i know that name I don't know. He's in San Diego. Wes Watson. He's, he's an influencer like, on okay. social media. Yeah. I have to look him up. He's uh, he's always at the gym at 4 a.m. Okay. Like yeah. you talk about like, you know, Jocko Willink type discipline. Okay. Yeah. This See, guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that level. I'm no uh, David Goggins type of guy. You know, I'm just doing my best to create my habits that are going to benefit my life. And the reality is everybody can do that. The problem is we look at the, the Jockos and the Goggins of the world and we compare ourselves to them and go, oh, I can never be like them. So then we just don't do anything. We throw the baby out with the bathwater. But everyone can create a morning routine. 10 minutes. Man, if you can't invest 10 minutes into your life, you're not concerned about your life. Period. Biggest biggest bomb of the episode, right there. There you go. That's facts. It's facts, folks. That's all you got to think about, right there. If you want to fix something, yeah. Because a lot of times people are always like, Brad, how do I do this? How do I do that? And it boils down to first thing you got to do is decide. And then once you decide, now you have to, you know, have discipline. What, what, what if I have no discipline? Then you better go learn discipline. You better go to the Tibet, Tibetan monks, or you go to Andy Frisella's seventy five hard, or you go, you know. Get your ass kicked by a freaking guru somewhere in the mountains of, yep. of, of India. Just make sure you get that discipline because that's all it is. Yeah. And it makes it sound easy, but it's not easy, which is why you have a bunch of clients that pay you because like, you know, it's not easy, but it is worth it. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. It's simple, but it ain't easy. Do you eventually coach people right up into becoming coaches themselves? Yeah, everybody who is a coach in my system came through my system. That's a must because so, they need to be around me. They need to know my energy and my language and how I speak. I wouldn't just hire a guy off the street unless he was willing to go through my program and really be part of the system that I teach because it's 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 very specific because I don't want, if you came in and, and hired me, the last thing I would want anyone to tell you is well, get on the treadmill more and eat less carbs. You can go to any Yahoo in the world and do that. That's why I bring it out wider with all of the other elements of it, because we can't separate from mind, body, spirit. We're all of those things together, regardless of what you believe. So it's important to incorporate those things in a way that is sensitive to that person's belief system. So I'm not trying to preach to anybody, but again, I'm not hiding from who I am and I'll say things that resonate with people because on some level, we all have that spiritual piece to us. It's just how we use the words around it. So these, these men, fitness is demystified to them. It's not as big of a deal because their myopic focus on getting abs is taken off and they're realizing, man, I'm drinking too much. I'm, I'm not treating my wife the way I should. And all of that stuff is going to weigh on you somehow and manifest some way. It has to manifest somewhere. And typically it's going to manifest in our weight because we're eating and drinking away all the bullshit that we're doing. Mm. Mm. It's real. Better listen, folks. So what would you say to the bomb squad if they're listening going, he just described me? Yeah. Don't feel alone and don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel ashamed. Feel like a human. It's part of the human experience. And I've been there. You've been there. We've I'm all been there. I'm still there. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we need to understand where we're at, get honest with ourselves, and take action. Because the reality is, I'll never forget this, Brad, when I was younger, my dad reading a newspaper, and then he just folded the newspaper in half and he put his head down. And I, man, I'm, wow. <laughs> he said, you know, I'm at that age, son, when my friends are all starting to die. And I didn't understand it at what I was 16, 15, when he said that. But I'm there now. I'm there now. I can't go a month without hearing of someone who I loved at some point in my life that meant something to me, whether they were in the past or wherever, that's no longer here. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick story. They called me Bart in the Marine Corps. And there was a guy named Clay Gittins, a real talented musician. I remember we were in Okinawa, Japan together, and it was storming out. We were locked in our squad bay. He was making music. 
we caught up with each other years later because he saw me on a magazine cover in a freaking grocery store and he looked me up on Facebook. But he kept saying, Bart, I'm going to get with you, man. I need to get in shape. I need to get in shape, Bart. I'm going to get with you. And I'll never forget, I'm sitting there talking to him on the phone. I'm like, Gittins, come on, bro. You got to do this now. Quit telling me you're going to do it. No, Bart, I'm going to get with you. I'm going to get with you. Hung up the phone. Next phone call I got a month later was Gittins was not around anymore from a heart attack. Something that could have been taken care of had he addressed those issues earlier when he thought about it, when he knew it was a thing. But how do you know, though, for sure? You don't. You know. You know, just like you maybe, said, you maybe know, him if you need starting to sleep exercise more. would have accelerated that. Yeah, who knows? But I would rather take that chance than not doing anything at all. You know what I mean? That's right. Ah, we're talking. Yeah, that's right. So, so it's never, it's never too late. The only thing, like when I'm thinking in my head, like, why don't people do this? It, it, at the end of the day, I always think to myself, like, I just think for myself like why don't i well i don't want to get too strict that's why and and maybe it is because i i don't want to say pamper because you know that's a stupid word but like in other words if i have to eat shit that tastes like hell i'm not doing it now i don't care that i have six pack because i'm still healthy i still feel great and i'm happy what do you think is more important happiness or a six pack happiness all day long. So what about the people that are listening? They're like, dude, I'm happy being a little chubby bunny. Yeah. So that's fine. But are you a healthy chubby bunny? That's the distinction that you made that, but we there didn't... are, but there are some healthy chubby dudes. Yeah. My dad's famous line was, you know, I might look like shit, but my doctor says I got the heart of an 18 year old. You know what he died of? What? congestive heart failure you know it was his heart that took him out at what age it's, it's a lot of people's hearts that's going to take him out no yeah. matter how healthy you are it could be your heart that takes you out i could nobody, yeah nobody dies healthy clark oh yeah they do nobody dies what healthy. if i crash on the way home and i'm healthy then you wouldn't good. be healthy you would you would have died of something yeah car healthy <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's a that's a statement no one can argue with nobody dies healthy because if you were healthy you wouldn't be dead Nobody dies healthy, but you, you are right. You can be healthy and I'm not advocating for not being healthy folks. I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I know that it'll make you feel better. It'll make you look better. And when you look better, you feel better. And when you feel better, you do better. And just confidence wise, like I always tell people fix their teeth. I've had people go and fix their teeth, come yeah. back and say, dude, I'm so glad you said that. And I'm like, see, I get MF for saying that when in reality, I'm just trying to tell people the truth, get your damn teeth fixed. So you smile more, get in shape a little bit. Like if you're, if you're one of those chubby guys that are happy, well then don't get in shape as long as you're healthy and you're not, you know, wheezing when you're wanting to play with your kids and then you get your life cut short. Yeah. So again, I mean, I'm, I don't care if someone wants to stay morbidly obese like that's their business i i don't i don't preach to anybody but when it comes to me what do i want dude i just want to have a lifestyle see what i'm saying yeah i want a lifestyle that leads to health yeah couple, it's, it's all about health yeah a couple things here i i could <clears throat> i could help you develop that lifestyle where you're not eating the food that it tastes like crap and you're not being over unbalanced i well, guess let's is the let's, right let's word. quiz real quick my diet Are you ready yeah okay what do you want to know what'd you eat today so far today yeah i i ate 12 egg whites okay. but i drank them because it's called muscle leg yeah i drank 12 egg whites in the morning what flavor at, at 6 30 chocolate nice then i went to the gym and i did arms okay tries and buys yeah friday arm day then i went home and i drank a 30 Graham premier protein, which is good as hell. It tastes like chocolate milk to me. Yeah. Then at nine 30, I had nine ounces of bison with a, with a half a cup of Jasmine rice and, and red bell peppers. Now, as soon as I get off this, which should be three hours later, roughly I'll have bison, no, uh, rice, with red peppers and sugar-free ketchup. Now, if someone says you can't have the ketchup, bro, that's where I draw the line. No, I'm not <laughs> doing it. What if I die tomorrow? 
Have your ketchup. What you if I you get just described a beautiful meal plan. That is, if all of your bomb squad ate the way you just described, all of your bomb squad would start moving in a direction of better health and fitness, guaranteed. If they did exactly what you could be, you want to be a coach with me? You haven't gone through my program, but you're coaching people right now on that because it's not that hard. Well, then, well, then I go home and I generally have some sort of 40 grams of protein whether it's a drink, a shake, or a steak. Like, it really don't matter to me. Right. And then I try to eat a few greens, five ounces of greens with each serving of protein, six times a day. Now, on the weekends, I'll kind of eat whatever I want. Yeah. Now, whatever I want is not usually that bad, but but sometimes it is. Like, I had a chocolate lava cake yesterday Ooh. with ice cream. Freaking delicious. Everyone's like, oh, I can't believe you'll eat that. Why? What's it going to do? Slow down my progress for a day? Because again, to me, it's like, what if I die tomorrow, bro? And I said yeah. no to the lava cake. Yeah. So there is an in-between is what I'm trying to share with people that you don't have to suffer. If people could just, that's where I was going. Why don't people do it? Because they don't want to suffer. And that's what I don't understand is people don't realize you don't have to suffer to get in shape. You just have to have consistency. And discipline, meaning five days a week, you eat you eat what well. Two days a week, have at it. Have your pizza. Have your five guys. You know, have your milkshakes. You shouldn't have to adapt your lifestyle to a fitness program. The fitness program should be adapted to your lifestyle, and that's what you just described. So, you oh, and then I do thirty minutes of cardio before I go to bed. There you go. That's it. You're you're on a great plan. You're on a great plan. So you, what you described to me in the green room, but that is going to go away because you have a timeline set and you know your body and but you will understand. It, yes. Will it go away eventually? If you continue on that path, but here's what That's I would recommend lifestyle. as a, your coach right now. I would say not two days of eating whatever you want on the weekend. Just one. <laughs> not even one whole day. Dang, dog. One meal. If we're going to dial it in. So what I teach guys how to do is dial in certain things. Just subtle changes, little levers here and there. And when you start doing that, I promise you, if you called every single one of my bomb squad guys right now, the CBX crew, and ask them, are you suffering? They would say, absolutely not. I'm eating more and better than I've ever eaten. I get them all on my meal plan service. They, they don't even have to cook their food. It's just sent to them. Do you like like Flavor God? Yeah, Flavor God's good. I met Flavor God on the airplane one day and he sent me a bunch of stuff. We were flying home from somewhere. I'm like, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? I got a company called Flavor God. Matter of fact, he's got a studio like this down in San Diego. Do you say, hey, I use your shit. I need to. I need more flavor guy well, stuff fit, right most now. Most fitness people use the flavor guy because it's kind of calorie free, isn't it? Yeah, it's just spices and stuff. I use Icon meals right now. They're, they're oh yeah, yeah. So 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 I started out with you know the ninety nine percent fat free turkey mm -hmm. with a cup of rice. Yeah. Well, tastes like ass. Okay, yeah. come on, not doing it. So I did that though for about three months. Go catch up on it, bro. Well, yeah. see, I didn't even realize you could. See, I so do ketchup and mustard on. Nobody, mine. nobody told me. So then I started throwing barbecue, sugar free barbecue sauce on there. I'm like, well, shit, this is doable. And then you know, next thing you know, I found bison. Bison's good, dude. I'm bison. Have, I have bison in my fridge right now. Dude, bison's like hamburger. Yeah. And by the way, hamburger's fine. Yeah. I love hamburger. Why not just plain ass hamburger? Give me a hamburger patty, dude. Give me a hamburger patty. All I need is 40 grams of protein. Yep. Isn't that bo boils down to it? Like, is, they're just macros. I don't even count macros. I don't even use the word. Like, my approach is so laid back and so in line with what you're saying you want yours to be. I don't count calories. I don't count macros. I don't follow a system. Well, how do you get people in shape then? Well, I do for them. Like I, I put them on it. Like we have an intake system and I find out everything that you need to know and, or need to do. And I put it in. So you would tell me, Hey, knock the two days down to one meal. So you would just eliminate my joy. Two days of joy. Yeah. I would eliminate in a day and a half of it. <laughs> if anybody wants their joy removed, <laughs> go to maximized man. I'm a joy elite. remover. That's but what I do, but what, what I wanted to get to people was, Number one, you don't have to suffer. No. Now, maybe he's, you're going to have to suffer a little more than you like because I'd rather have two days. He's saying, well, it's better just a meal. Point being is you don't have to suffer. It's just a choice. 
And every single person will be better off if they make that choice to get in shape. So that's where I want to leave it, folks. Get your ass in shape. If not for you, for your family, for 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 your kids, for anyone who has to, you know, literally be in your life. Because the better in shape you are, the better off you are. Huh? Absolutely. Drop a bomb for yourself, my brother. Folks, and if you guys do want to get in shape, go see Clark at Clark Bartram. Website, MaximizedManElite.com. You'll check him out. He writes articles. He's all over the magazines, and you know who he is. You can Google him. He's all over the Internet. Until next time, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.